Turns out some parts of the city can get much hotter, hotter than others. Fox News Audrey Wheel spoke with a PSU professor about so-called heat islands and which parts of Portland tend to get the hottest. She's also showing us one spot where it seems the road got so hot it buckled, Audrey? Yeah, Wayne, that's what we're hearing from Peabot, at least. Look at this intersection. This is kind of a concrete section on North Denver and McClellan. And you can see where the road here kind of just came up and buckled right in this line. Obviously, this section is closed, so you don't have any traffic coming through here on this. Peabot is still investigating what exactly happened here, but said it was likely due to the heat. And we learned today that depending on where you live across the city, you might have been feeling this weather more so than in other spots. Driving around Portland, it's easy to see the contrast between some of the green shaded neighborhoods like near Forest Park and the spots with more commercial development like on Southeast 82nd. Turns out these different landscapes can have a big impact on the temperature in different pockets of the city. Some neighborhoods have materials that are just a lot more dense, a lot more um, heat absorbing and have a, as a result, a much hotter um, ambient or air temperature than other parts that may not have the same material. Portland State Professor Vivek Shonda studies urban heat islands, what's commonly known as the difference in temperature between a city and its surrounding forested or agricultural areas. But he says heat islands occur within parts of a city too, based on the amount and type of infrastructure. Some of those materials <laughs> absorb the sun's radiation a bit more um, let's say fully and hold on to that for a bit longer time. So when you have a material that's holding on to that heat for a long period of time, it's re-radiating that heat back out into the world. For example, here at Southeast 82nd and Holgate, our thermometer reading about 116.2 in the air. And on the sidewalk here, measuring a whopping 152.4. Whereas right here at the entrance to Forest Park, it is much cooler. If we take a look at our thermometer here and the temperature in the air, reading about 96.9 pointed toward some of the trees over here. And then if we pointed at the ground, about 90.8 on this shaded gravel. Shondis says greenery can make a huge difference in the heat, absorbing the sun's radiation, pulling water from the ground and providing shade. He showed us these pictures more accurate than our science experiment, an ivy covered wall measuring about 117 degrees versus this wall measuring at 157. You can kind of see what the differences are in the same block, one with and one without the greening. Shonda says even downtown Portland stays a bit cooler with tall buildings compared to the central east side with flat low buildings often made of cinder block or other dense materials. And Shonda says the research on this is so important because people who live in some of these hotter spots can be more susceptible to heat-related illness or death. It's also important in looking at long-term sustainability of the energy grid. And short-term, he says, that is why it's so important to check on your neighbors during times when we see that kind of heat and a good reason to add some greenery around your house. Reporting live in North Portland, Audrey Wheel, Fox 12 Oregon.